Okay. Uh, as you people uh, may or may not know, uh, the December 13th edition of uh, TNA Impact drew uh, 1.2 rating. That's their highest rating yet since they moved to a two-hour format. So congratulations, TNA. Yay, whoop de doo Okay. Now, as it turns out, despite Booker T, despite Kurt Angle, despite all this uh, quote-unquote star power that TNA has now, the highest rated quarter hour of the show was, in fact, the women's tag, the women's tag match of Jackie Moore, Tracy Brooks versus Angelina Love and Velvet Sky. So, in honor of the uh, lovely ladies who drew those ratings, uh, I thought a new video was in order, one in which we discussed TNA's fledgling women's division. Now, uh, let me preface this by making a comparison to the WWE women's division, okay? The main difference between the women of TNA and the women of WWE is that in TNA, the women come to be wrestlers first and models second, okay? But in WWE, the women come to be sex objects first and everything else second. Now, don't believe me? No problem, okay? All you have to do is watch the show for all the evidence that you need. Raw, SmackDown, ECW, really doesn't matter which one because you know all the proof is right there in the ring and out of the ring. How about Kelly Kelly, a recent match with Layla, you know, attempting quite possibly the worst handspring elbow in history. You know, then there's Ashley who breaks her own arm by throwing bad punches. Then there's Beth Phoenix dragging an unconscious Candice Michelle around by her hair when she just watched Candace fall off the top turnbuckle and land on her fucking head. <coughs> now, to be fair, they do have a couple good women workers, okay? Victoria's great. Mickey James, I love. Melina has her moments. You know, Beth Phoenix, she has potential, even though she's way too green to be in the spot she's in right now, and Candace Michelle is the same way. The rest of them are just sort of faking it. And the reason for this is because WWE does not sign women based on actual wrestling ability. Vince McMahon wants women who look sexy on camera, and if they turn out to have some talent in the ring, that's just an added bonus. Kelly Kelly, prime example. Okay, she basically got her job when somebody in the WWE saw her in a magazine somewhere and thought she looked hot, so they signed her, threw her on TV with no training, no preparation whatsoever, then she debuted on the first episode of the new ECW on Sci-Fi as a so-called exhibitionist who couldn't even figure out how to unhook her own fucking bra. Then there's TNA, and in TNA, rather than being sexy athletes, the women are athletes who are also sexy. Okay, first we got Gail Kim, the woman around whom TNA is building their whole women's division right now. I love Gail Kim, and not just because I want her to have my baby, okay? <laughs> you know, I've said this in other forums before, WWE was smoking crack when they let this girl get away, and you can't deny that, the lady is great. You know, easily one of the top women wrestlers in North America right now. Not only is she a great wrestler and absolutely smoking hot, but she's also got the guts to take those big bumps when the situation calls for it. Look at Lockdown from this past year, her match with Jackie Moore, okay? She dove off the top of the freaking cage onto Jackie to win the match. You think you'd ever see Kelly Kelly or Maria do that in the WWE? You think you'd ever see a freaking women's cage match in WWE, period? Please, this one's a no-brainer. Then we got Awesome Kong. Now, I've... You know, we've heard more, more than one wrestling analyst call Awesome Kong the best heel man or woman in TNA, and that is pretty hard to argue. You know, Beth Phoenix has got absolutely nothing on Awesome Kong, right? <laughs> I mean, the woman, th this is a woman who basically got thrown into the main events in Japan as a rookie because they liked her look. I mean, way before she was ever ready to be in there. And not only did she not flop, she actually thrived there. In fact, I'll go one better. You know, G uh, Gail Kim and Awesome Kong is the best feud in TNA right now. You know, there's no overcomplicated match stipulations to confuse the audience or bizarre plot twists that make no sense. You've got Gail, that plucky underdog babyface, and Kong, that monster heel that Gail just can't seem to beat, but she keeps trying and coming back again and again, no matter how many times she gets beaten down. You know, it's, it's a real easy feud to get into, and it's got a ton of heat behind it now. I mean, their match and their post-match beatdown was the best thing about Turning Point this year. You know, this is the perfect feud to put the women's division on the map because if Gail Kim is the AJ Styles of the women's division, then Awesome Kong is, is definitely the Samoa Joe. Okay, then, then we've got ODB. Now, I've heard some pretty ridiculous stuff about ODB. Let me tell you something, okay? People can piss and moan all they want about how trashy and sleazy and how tasteless her gimmick is, 
But you know what? I mean, it's over. It's it's way over. I mean, she's gotten, you know, seriously over as a baby face in a really short period of time, even though she's being pushed as a heel right now. I mean, hell, I mean, there were ODB chants during the women's gauntlet match of Bound for Glory for crying out loud, and that was only her second appearance and her first match in the company. You know, I think crea the creative team's really onto something with ODB, and they should seriously think about, you know, adding her into this you know, Gail Kim Awesome Kong feud and make it a three-way feud for the women's championship. Because, you know, going by the ODB chants in the impact zone when Kong was laying waste to Gail Kim at turning point, I think the audience really wants to see it. You know, I mean, she works uh, sort of a brawling type style in the ring as opposed to the more technical stuff, you know, you'd see, you know, Gail Kim do. And yeah, she's a pretty unusual character, you know, that we're not really used to seeing in women's wrestling, but I think that's why people like her, you know, because she's unique. Now, another thing, uh, <laughs> I think TNA is really missing a golden opportunity if they don't pair up, uh, pair her up with uh, James Storm. I mean, I mean, look at her gimmick and look at his gimmick. I mean, it just fits. I mean, that, that's potential for comedic gold right there, if you ask me. I mean, Storm and Jackie Moore, I never really saw the chemistry there. You know, I say split those two up, pair up James Storm with ODB, and just sit back and see what happens. <laughs> you know? Um, <clears throat> another unique character is uh, Roxy Laveau. Now, I like Roxy because of her look. You know, because, you know, since, like, like ODB, I mean, it's so different than what we're used to seeing in women's wrestling. But I think people tend to overlook her wrestling ability because of this. Um, you know, I think that Voodoo Queen gimmick does sort of hinder her in the ring a little bit. What with her doing all that herky-jerky voodoo stuff, you know? I'm not really enamored with with this, whatever this is. But, uh, you know, aside from that, I do like her character and she plays it really well. Plus, I mean, if you watch her matches as Nikki Rocks on the independent circuit, I mean, the girl can definitely wrestle. I mean, she hasn't gotten the opportunity to really display that in TNA yet, but she will sooner or later. <coughs> uh, next, we have the newly christened uh, Angelina Love. This one's self-explanatory. I mean, I'm not crazy about her new porn star ring name. You know, I preferred Angel Williams, but the lady's already shown that she can work. I mean, this is her second stint in TNA. The first one was a couple of years ago back in Nashville. You know, and since then, she's wrestled for WWE and Deep South Wrestling and AAA down in Mexico. You know, she's competed all over. I mean, she's got a lot of experience, and I think she's, you know, arguably the best wrestler in the division outside of Gale and Kong. It's probably maybe like a, a tie for third with her and Roxy Laveau right now. Uh, Velvet, don't call me Talia Madison Sky. Now, if there's any kind of weak link in the women's division, I think it's probably her. She's not a bad worker, don't get me wrong. I mean, she can work competently. But I don't know how much raw ability she has. I don't know if I see anything out of the ordinary coming from her. Maybe a, a different gimmick would change that. I don't know. You know, I haven't seen a whole lot of her yet. I don't really know anything about her. So who knows? Maybe she'll prove me wrong. I hope she does. But in the meantime, <clears throat> you know, she's worth keeping around just so we can keep seeing that ring entrance first because it is, <laughs> it is just delightful. Uh, Tracy Brooks and Jackie Moore. Nothing much you can really say about them that hasn't been said already. Jackie's a veteran. She's been around for years. We all know that. We all know what she's going to deliver by now. Tracy Brooks, she's been in TNA longer than any of them, I believe. And while I do think the cameramen tend to focus a little bit on her chest uh, too much sometimes, you know, she's definitely a solid worker. Now, I haven't really mentioned Christy Hemme yet, and that's just because I consider her more of a manager slash valet type of character than a wrestler, and TN, the TNA creative team are probably thinking along those same lines, which is why she doesn't compete in matches that often, and she usually ends up doing the job when she does. You know, same deal with SoCal Val, same deal with Karen Angle. <coughs> so, in conclusion, TNA Women's Division is head and shoulders above WWE Women's Division. It's not even a contest, in my opinion. So if you care, if all you care about is tits and ass, one or two good women workers surrounded by about 25 crappy ones, the WWE is for you. But if you want to watch women who not only are very good looking, but can actually wrestle and put on a good competitive match without botching spots and injuring each other and themselves due to being you know, way too green to be on TV in the first place, you know the place to go. TNA.